today we are going to be drawing some cows and not just any cows but dancing cows for this project you're going to need a piece of white paper and crayons those are the must-haves if you want to you could also grab a black marker of some kind and watercolors um, for your background if you want to do watercolors um, you could also grab markers for a background and if you wanted to change it up but definitely crayons and paper you could do the whole thing with just that if that's what you have at home okay so i'm going to start with my black marker you could use a black crayon if you'd like and i'm going to move my paper so that it's going the long way and we are going to draw a cow more specifically a Holstein cow. A Holstein cow are those black and white cows. So if you see those in a field, they really stand out along the green grass because they're so white and black with all those spots. And they're fun to draw because you get to make those organic shapes and those different spots on the cow. So um, this is going to be really fun because you get to decide how your cow is going to be dancing and you get to make some choices on um, how you want its arms and legs and even its head to go um, because we're going to be showing movement in that way. You showed some movement the other week when you made your waterfall making the water look like it was rushing down. Well now we're going to do a different kind of movement and that is going to be the movement of this cow to make it look like it's dancing. So let's get started. We're going to start with our um, black and right towards the top I'm gonna make my I'm gonna use my space and I'm gonna make this cow pretty big I'm gonna make a U shape for the head so I am making it a little tilted here's one of your choices do you want your cow's head to be straight up and down do you want it to be a little tilted on its head a little bit if you do then make your U a little bit off to the side and we're going to be using some of those elements of art for this. Remember those? See if you can remember them. Line, shape, color, baby, color, form, value, texture, and space. Let's use our space right now for that. Okay, now let's put the ears on. So up at the top, I'm going to draw just kind of a big scoop around like that. So it's kind of like a loop that comes out on both sides to be the ears. Let's add some horns to the head. So for that, up at the top here, I'm gonna make like a curved line. And on the other side, a curved line. I'm going pretty close to the top here. Yours might not be quite that tight. I really, I'm really using my space. And then when you get up here, just kind of curve back down curve back down, almost like crescents. They almost looks like little moons, don't they? All right, the nose right down here. I'm gonna make sort of a rectangular shape, but my edges are curved. They're not pointy. And then two big ovals inside of that. And then two dots eyes. Looking good. All right, now the cow's body. You, There's a drawing guide in the slides. You can look back at those if you want to, if you want to get some ideas on ways that you want your cow to be, because um, there's lots of funny ideas. But um, it's just basically an oblong, like oval shape. So I'm just going to make mine like that just kind of right into the middle there don't go too far down because you're going to need space for those legs and those legs are important because those are the parts that are dancing and now we're going to add some long rectangles for arms this is what's going to be fun is you get to choose how you want your arms do you want them like both up maybe it's like doing and maybe they're even curved a little bit so maybe they're not straight rectangles but even curved rectangles um, is one up and one down. Maybe one is angled. 
All right, so I'll do one like this. And they have hooves at the end, so we don't need any fingers or anything. Just, um, just a line on the end, and then I'm putting another line for the hoof. So I've got one arm up like that, and then down here, this one maybe will be a little curved, like he's got a little elbow there. There we go. And another line here for the hoof. See? Again, you don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want. Yours can be both up, they could be down, I can, you can choose. Put some movement on those arms. Okay, now movement on the legs. Are they is it one up like this? Is that would that be pretty silly, wouldn't it? Are they both off to the side? Make those legs dancing. Maybe the legs are like this one was where they're bent. And it looks like he's bending his knee. I'm gonna do this one straight down for balance. Another line, horizontal line there for the hoof. And then this one, hmm, I'm gonna do, come down like that and then bend the knee up. Almost going off the paper there. And then another horizontal line like that. Dancing cow. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay. Now the cow has udders, so we're gonna put the udders there. We would, if, if, if a cow was standing up and dancing like that, we would see its udders. So I'm gonna put a circular shape down here near the bottom of its body, and then just some little U's here for use for its udders. Okay, so we said this is a Holstein cow. Remember that means it's got black organic shapes around it. So I'm going to add those wherever I want to. So like that. This is what's fun. Do one on the side of the face there. Maybe another one over here. I'm not gonna do the hooves cause those will be black. So I'll leave those alone. Some of them might be going right off the, to the side, right? Maybe it goes onto the other side of the arm. All right, I'm gonna finish drawing all of those. And then I'm going to get to color in. So I need a little bit more here on the body, but not too much. Cause this right here in the middle would probably not have any spots because that would be the, the bottom side of the cow. I'll just do that. All right, now I get to color in. I'm gonna leave most of it white, but I'm going to color those spots in black, the nose and the udders pink. I'm gonna choose to do those pink and then I'll choose a color for those um, horns as well. I'm gonna work on that right now with my crayons. Okay, I'm done coloring my cow. This cow was so much fun. As I was coloring, I was thinking more about it and I thought it would be pretty cool or funny if you decided to color your spots different than black. Maybe your cow isn't a classic Holstein that's black and white. Maybe its spots are a different color. Obviously, if a cow is dancing like this, it's not a regular normal cow. So it could have some rainbow spots or green spots or something else. So if you're um, wanting to make your spots different because you have more of a ma an imaginary cow, that is fine. But mine is actually a more realistic cow because I stuck with the black and white, which I do like because it's really going to pop when we put our background in. So let's add our background, which is going to be off in the distance. So I'm going to take 
Um, I'm taking my marker again, but whatever black you have, and I'm gonna start by drawing a horizon line. Remember, a line in the background, that's where the sky meets the ground. So you can kind of choose where you want that to be. Mine's gonna be kind of up here. And when I get to the cow, I'm gonna stop. And then I'm gonna kind of just trace my finger of where that would be coming out. That'd probably come out right around here and finish the line to the end. All right, there's my horizon line. Let's put something in the background. It could be a line of trees. It could be a fence, um, something simple. I'm gonna do a little fence. So for that, I'm going to add some like, um, vertical lines like that with a little triangle point. It's gonna be a picket fence that's called. So I'm just gonna make a, a line of those. And when I get to my cow here, I have to, oh, I didn't finish it there because the cow is in the way. And there, that wouldn't be, we're gonna skip over this part now. Let's put another one here. All right. This is kind of tricky because our cow is in front of it. Do the best you can. Oops. Maybe I'll put one more. It's kind of going off the side of the page. Okay, and then I need some horizontal lines that are connecting all of those fence posts. like that. There we go. Now, I want it to be a white picket fence. So I'm actually just going to take my white and color it in, even though that seems like that's silly because the paper is white and I'm just coloring white on white. But I am going, I am going to do watercolor for my background and I don't want the watercolor um, to get on it. You could do the same thing with your whole cow too. I'm gonna try to be careful with my cow, but since there's some little spaces here um, that I'll have to get my watercolor in, I feel like it's possible that it could spread onto this fence and I wanna protect the fence. And we know that when we watercolor, it doesn't go on top of crayon. Crayon resists it, it stops it. So that's kind of a way to keep that white. Okay, now I'm going to color my background. So I'm going to put, I'm going to do it traditional. That means the regular colors. I'm going to put green at the bottom and blue at the top. Maybe there's a sunset and you want to have a different color on the top. I think your cow is probably going to want some green grass to dance on, but maybe you have a different idea. Okay. So I'm gonna start, and remember, you don't have to use watercolor if you don't have watercolor at home. You can use crayon for your background or marker, or you can try our way of making watercolors with markers where you color your marker on a plastic bag and use some water to mix it. You can do that too. Okay, I'm gonna show you before I get working a couple ways of painting with watercolors that will make your watercolors do different things. So I'm gonna start with my paintbrush and dip it in my water. Now my paintbrush is wet and I'm gonna get onto my green here. The first time you start using watercolors, you always have to wet it to make sure it gets working. So now my paintbrush and my, has paints on it, it's wet, but my paper is dry. So this is a wet on dry. This is wet, this is dry. And I'm gonna put it on there and that's my technique. It spreads a little bit, not too much. So I'm gonna keep, I like to keep moving that around until there's really no more color. I have to be careful around my cow here because I didn't color the white parts white. And so there's nothing to protect it and I don't want a green cow. So I have to go really slowly when I go around the cow's body here. All right, so there we go, I'm going on there. Now I'm kind of running out. Now, instead of dipping this back in the water, 
I'm going to go right back to the green. And try that. Now look at, there was still some water left in there, so I still could get it. This is a dry on dry. So look at that. It's not really spreading at all. Sometimes you might want to do this if you want a darker color or if you want to go in a, like a little tiny space because you don't want the watercolor to move. So this is dry, but then maybe sometimes I do like to do that right around the edges just so that it doesn't spread inside. But then I dip it in the water and put the wet on the dry again to kind of spread it out coming this way. See? All right, one last one, and that's gonna be wet on wet. So this one, I dip my paint brush in the water and I just make the paper wet here. You can't really, it's really light. All right, there's not a lot of color on there. And then dip it in the water and dip it back in the color. And I put that wet paintbrush with wet paint on it right on the wet paper. And it really adds color and spreads much more quickly. And that is good to do when you've got a big space to color because it fills the space quicker and if you're not needing to be careful because you've got a big space to work with I like to add the color to to the wet already but then if you have to get close again you might want to switch to one of those other kinds of ways to do it okay so when I'm doing my background I like to switch it up and I do different things in different areas depending on what um, what I need to do. So if I need it like this, I need a little skinny spot. I didn't want to put water on my paper first because I didn't want it to spread all over because that's a skinny spot. But now this big spot, I might want to get it all wet first and then go to the paint and fill it up so I can fill that space area. Okay, I'm going to keep working finishing this bottom and then move to the top with a different color. All right, do that now. Okay, and there's my finished cow. It really pops with that background, doesn't it? You can really see him dancing now. And um, when you, if you're using watercolors, it does take some practice to, to control the colors and to make sure you're not getting your paper too wet because sometimes when it's too wet, it could even rip the paper. So if you're using watercolors, um, just remember that's, something that takes some practice to really move them around and make them work the way that you want them to and to use those different techniques can help you to do that like I showed you with the wet and the dry different types of things. Um, here is another cow that I made earlier has a different dance move there and as you can see I did the background different. I did a line of triangle trees instead you could also put mountains in the background. Whatever you want to put on that horizon line. Um, what else could you put? Hay bales. You could just put a line of regular trees. Put something simple back there, but put something in the background to make it a little more interesting. All right, I cannot wait to see your dancing cows. We are gonna have a cow dance party going on here with all these silly cows and their dancing moves. Remember, you can look back at the slides to see some different choices of ways that your cow could be moving its arms and legs. And let's boogie down, have fun. Remember to post your picture to Seesaw so that I can see.